we're very thankful and lucky to have a member of the Juilliard String Quartet uh, and festival regular, Astrid Schween. Thank you so much for, for spending some time and chatting with us today. Thanks so much for inviting me on, Timika. It's great yeah. to see you. Yeah, it's nice to see you as well. Uh, at the moment, where are you, you hunkering down? Where is home for you? Right, good question. Um, well, home is, is officially New York, um, but I was able to make a quick dash escape before things got too severe there. And I came up to Massachusetts. This is where I, um, I taught for many years in Amherst. Um, so my husband and I have a, a small house here and, and we have been hunkering down and just sort of trying to stay out of the fray. Um, yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's quite uh, important. nice to get out of the city. I know it's, you know, really is the epicenter. Um, yes. everybody is healthy and safe for, for you there, I hope. Yes. Thank you very yeah. much. Yes, we're fine. And we're really fortunate to be able to go outside a little bit here and go for walks and things that were less, less possible in New York, obviously. Definitely. Well, that's, uh, great to hear. I'm glad, you know, we're, uh, as we're checking in, we always want to make sure everybody is is staying healthy and staying safe. It's the most important thing here at at this particular junction. Uh, what does a typical day look like for you <laughs> right now? Uh, you know, no day is typical, but sort of what what is the new norm for you? Well, it's it's an interesting situation. Obviously, it's it's um, uh, I guess I'm still finishing my semester at Juilliard, and uh, the school has really done incredible job of um, informing the students and the faculty and sort of keeping us all connected um, and on track so that our students are still matriculating the ones who are supposed to graduate will graduate and um, everything is on schedule so for the rest for the faculty that means we are teaching most days um, online via zoom uh, or skype or facetime um, and the very interesting thing is my, the cello lessons have been in very intensely focused. <laughs> and I told my students, I said, you know, this is a horrible thing that's happened to the world, but for us and our work, this is an opportunity to really hone in and, and, um, and sharpen everybody's skills. So we're, we're really kind of um, managing to get a lot of work done. And um, yeah. Yeah, with the chamber music, it's a different kind of experience than usual. So we're all being very creative about how to approach that. And uh, I'm meeting with my chamber groups, the ones I'm coaching, um, to do very deep immersion into score reading and interpretive work. And it's it's really being become something new and fascinating for all of us. Oh, that's great. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I was going to ask a little bit, you know, about the, the remote or distant learning, distance learning and... Um, you know, sort of how it has changed, obviously, how you can work with your students, but it sounds like there's some real positive things that have kind of come out of it as you've had to adapt and, and evolve what you do in a class. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it really has made me sit and reflect and, and kind of devise new ways of talking about music in the absence of live performance. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, what can we hold on to and how can we really do something that we've never really had the chance to do with enough with enough focus and that is the whole area of score study and interpretation um it fascinates me and and um i think the kids that i work with are are also interested but always so busy preparing and polishing their performance that there's just always the the, the score study gets pushed back a little bit that's great. Yeah, finding kind of a new balance and, and all of that. I'm curious too, I mean, we've seen, you know, lots of these performances uh, that look like they're live on Skype, but obviously with latency and lag, teaching chamber music versus, you know, just solo performances. Mm -hmm. um, is there a performance component or, or is that something that has kind of had to, you know, stop because you can't do it in real time? Right. No, it's a great question. There, there's still a, a, a solo performance a component. All of my students and I meet for cello lessons, and they play. Most of that, that hour that we're online together is full of cello playing, um, and my demonstrations and our discussions about that. Um, the school is airing a lot of performances, as you mentioned, and uh, juries and graduate recitals and things are all being uploaded in pretty much unaccompanied form, unless someone is fortunate enough to live 
you know, with a pianist who's, who's able and willing to provide, you know, some, some backing for the solo repertoire. Um, but we're all adapting. There's, there are a lot of different options for students. Some of these kids have been, you know, they're far flung. They're, they're going home to all parts of the earth and they've been affected by the virus in some, sometimes in very personal ways. And so the school has really um, done a great job of trying to, um, what's the word, diversify the different ways in which students can comply with their requirements. Um, and so it's, it's a more forgiving, more inventive landscape right now. That's great. Uh, I'm curious, you know, so a big part of what you do is with the quartet, the string quartet there, uh, connected obviously with Juilliard. Yeah. Um, and that obviously is kind of upended at the moment. Have you, you know, been staying in contact about what your plan is when we are able to get back to normal and, and working on new rep? Or are you just going to, you know, because you have, I'm sure, lost some performances, try to keep with what you, you know, you were going to do? Or, or what's that kind of look like as you are more of a, a true ensemble than what happens here in Seattle with, you know, folks coming together for, for performances? Right. Yeah, no, it's, um, this, this, this is a whole new reality for us right now. And um, we are very much in touch. We have invented the mega text <laughs> which is, you know, some very things that, that um, you know, challenge the length of the Sermon on the Mount will, will come through on our phones. Um, but yeah, no, we're, we're totally in touch. We're thinking about repertoire. Um, every day we're in touch with our managers about postponements and, and looking at new dates for things. We've, we've um, had about eight or nine cancellations of concerts in the last four weeks. And you know the rest are scheduled in front of us, and so we're now we're awaiting news about summer festivals and you know what will actually happen. Um, we have you know recording plans and commissioning plans, and so just trying to talk together and figure out rough times when we imagine we might be able to reconvene together, and in the meantime prepare ourselves. And I'm getting to put to to use my my great new score study regimen. <laughs> <laughs> for all of our repertoire. Practice what yeah. you're preaching there. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, yeah, and it, at the same time, Sandy, it's, it's really, you know, we're very fortunate that we're all healthy, um, you know, knock on wood so far, and, and we're able to to reflect on the season. You know, when, when artists are running around, you sort of live off of fumes, right? Everything is, you're just constantly in motion and so totally engaged, and it's fabulous, but it also you know, to be able to slow things down and take a look and take a deep breath and uh, consider deeply, you know, what you've been doing, what you are doing, what you'd like to do. Um, it's a unique, a unique opportunity for a reset. Um, so, yeah, it's a silver lining. Yeah, taking, taking that time. Um, a lot of yeah, our yeah. musicians have been traveling, you know, nonstop for years and years and years. Yeah, and yeah. this has given them a chance to sort of slow down and how has that been to adjust? I mean, is it something that sounds like you stay pretty busy with teaching? You know, do you do you enjoy having that time that now is is used differently and is your own? Um, or or do you like crave <laughs> back out on the road? Or, or how has it adju the adjustment been for you? Yeah, that's a great question, Zedek. I I have to say, um, I mean, I, I miss my colleagues. I miss our daily engagement. Um, I miss being with my students, although I'm, I'm spending a lot of time with them in a very intense way anyway. Um, those things are, are sad to be without. Um, I love traveling, so, you know, there are disappointments, and we're supposed to be in New Orleans and San Francisco and all these great places. And um, But at the same time, I think um, I'm somebody who benefits from quiet and... Um, I'm, I'm able to spend large chunks of time on my own, you know, without freaking out <laughs> so far. So, um, yeah, the, I think just being able to be a little bit thoughtful and to consider things and to take in new things and to not be in a rush um, is, it's a, again, another sort of silver lining in, in what is otherwise a worldwide, you know, disaster. Um, the, the fact that we can find some little positive moments in this is, is really very fortunate. You know, I guess I'm, I'm curious with that, you know, being, being where you are, being at home, 
Are you revisiting, you know, pieces that you love that you haven't been able to play for a while? Are you trying to explore new and exciting different rep? Or, you know, as a, a musician, how are you keeping yourself engaged and, and what sort of is speaking to you at the moment? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. Um, I am, first of all, I'm getting, getting myself fit again. So I, I've got sort of a daily routine of exercise and stretching and walking and that's feeling good. Um, and then in terms of my cello playing, same thing. I'm just kind of zoning in on some, some uh, unaccompanied repertoire that I have always wanted to get to that I haven't been able to really polish to the level that I'd like. Um, a lot of we have we're so fortunate in the cello repertoire to have these masterpieces of the 20th century for solo cello. So I'm I'm diving deep. Um, and my students are as well. Um, I'm reviewing a lot of Bach, and um, uh, I'm also doing something kind of fun. I mean, it's it's amazing that I have this chance right now to edit a recording that I'd made um, about a year ago with a dear friend of mine. Um, we recorded the Frank and Rachmaninoff sonatas, and then both just got so caught up in life, and so did our engineer, that everything just sat for a while. And so now I'm actually in the process of sitting down and listening to those sessions and, and making decisions about things. And so we'll have, hopefully at the end of all of this, a, a nice uh, recording ready to issue. Press, so. As you've been home, have you rediscovered old hobbies or things that you love to do? Are there books on yeah. the shelf that you've always wanted to read that you're pulling off or binge watching any shows? What, <laughs> what else have you been been doing? Oh, all of the above. I um, yeah. I mean, getting out into the woods and walking every day is is a longtime passion. I used to go on long treks by myself for days at a time when I was young and crazy. Um, now I, I go for a couple hours and come back. Um, and of course, you know, the idea is to not be outside and around people. So um, we've been good at finding routes that are a little off the beaten path. Um, I'm also, I love reading. And in honor of my, my love of Seattle, um, I, one of my favorite books is uh, A Passage to Juno by Jonathan Raban. I just love this book, and it's all about sailing the inside passage, um, and it evokes, you know, great memories of, of the city and the people and the, the geography of the place. So um, I've been revisiting that and other books about the sea um, and sailing and um, a lot of books on, on teaching and, and by musicians, um, reflections on... Um, yeah, there's a wonderful book called Rosin Dust, which is a wonderful resource for cellists. I've got my students reading Mindset for one of the classes that I teach at school, which is a really phenomenal, um, I think, breakthrough in, in not just positive thinking, but how, to, how we sort of see ourselves in the world and, and how do we um, get, get through times of adversity. I thought it was a very apropos moment to give them something that might just help provide a little staircase to a more positive viewpoint. Um, and yeah, so there's just a stack of books on my, <laughs> on my night table. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very engaging time. I'm all listening to podcasts. Um, I discovered BritBox. <laughs> yes. All the classic old British uh, it's wonderful just, series. Delicious, yes. And then uh, also, of course, we're watching Netflix when, when we can. But um, it's been a pretty busy time. And, and one of the assignments I gave this, this large class of mine was a, a letter writing assignment just to see how they would write a letter of introduction and inquiry and also thank you notes, thank you letters. How did, because this is a, an art form I think that's getting lost. And I thought, well, while we're all at home, let's do some writing. Um, and the only problem with that is I get 40 assignments that I then have to read and respond to <laughs> and express something of one's passion on paper, I think it's really neat. Um, yeah. uh, I know once we're back and able to have performances, it, it seems like it's going to be something that people are so excited about. Yeah, when that's right. I, I think, um, I mean, between the quartets concerts and my own recitals this spring, you know, it, it will have amounted to a couple dozen performances that we're not giving. Um, and I'm just imagining as we look to the fall for rescheduling some of these events, how a lot of them are likely to be in some sort of online format. I mean, until we know more, 
we're really excited to be able to look forward and share music and you know get people together even if it is online communities and and getting to experience the the great work that you guys all do i think it might open new pathways for all of us and you know in an age of um global warming and needing to take into consideration just how often we travel and where i think that's going to become something that that's a little bit more on people's minds um who knows how this all pans out but um yeah, I think I look forward to some kind of presence with, with everybody this summer. I know that Seattle went through such a hard time. You were sort of the first spot in the States that really got hit so hard and uh, was thinking about everyone during that time. Well, I really appreciate you taking some time uh, chatting with us. I know our, our fans here are going to be really excited to hear what you're up to and um, we'll very much look forward to when we can all get together. If it's Thank you so much, Seneca. It's been a pleasure to see you and yeah. talk with you. Yeah.